you know, the first year was a was a you know a worrying experience, to say the least. We'd invested for us at the time what felt like quite a lot of money, and we got a few sponsors. Um, the idea was that the sponsors would kind of cover the cost, and the rest would be, you know, but that wasn't really wasn't the case. I just hope we could uh, we, we we'd be able to at least cover the cost. And um, we had Bonhams, we had Citroen, we had Honda, and we had Aston Martin uh, that first year, and. Um, I was very excited, obviously, and delighted to have to have them involved. But the challenge and the cost of putting the whole thing on had way outstripped um, all of that. I think the fact that we put it on at all was something of a miracle because we were all doing five or six jobs at once and all the infrastructure was done by the repairs and maintenance department at Goodwood. So these are guys who normally would be doing something looking after the estate. And we had to make everything. So first of all, we didn't get much sleep for the month before the event. Um, I, don't, I don't think anyone had a day off for two or three months from memory. I know I didn't. Well, I think our expectations were limited. Um, first of all, as always, with any great public event in this country, you're on tent hooks wondering what the darn weather's going to do, you know. Are you going to be wading around in gumboots or sort of basking here in, you know, in blazing sunshine? And um, Lord March was right in there, you know, doing all the jobs like everybody else, early mornings, late nights. He's the finest detail person I've ever worked with. And, you know, picky, picky, but, you know, you've got to be. The staff here, even then with that first meeting, were... Just terrific. I remember seeing the head gardener here at the time on hands and knees with a pair of scissors trimming the grass on the carriage circle. And it rained and rained and rained in the build-up. And, um, you know, we actually ended up, I, I can remember paint, I painted the bridge myself pretty much uh, those days before and everything was, you know, it was all pretty stressful and it, the rain was the washing the paint off as quickly as we got it on. But the rain and the bridge were not the biggest problems. The biggest problems turned out to be the parking and the taking of the money. And the reason for this was that we thought, we, the BARC told us we might get 5,000 people. We had no idea how many people were going to come. It was all on the, everyone came on the day, they paid on the day, and I was pretty worried no one was going to turn up. I didn't sleep much the night before, opened my bathroom windows, I told this story many times, and um, man, they were just pouring in. It was just, my God, I mean, they were pouring up the cathedral walk towards the house, like, a stampede and of course by which time they'd also broken the fence down and we were unable to collect the money properly we had no not enough tickets to give everybody we went and bought a load of cloakroom tickets like raffle tickets it should have just give some people something tore them in half and gave them something as an entry and um we famously had nowhere to put the money either so wilfred cass who owns the sculpture park at goodwood who's a great entrepreneur himself saw the problem and immediately went to his wife's uh, wardrobe took out all her old handbags and rushed around the car park giving out handbags to all the car park attendants so they could just stick the money in the handbag and then he went round with his old BMW with the boot open and just pouring the money out of the handbags into the car so that was pretty helpful but the the fences were well you know the the, the fence we didn't have a proper fence around the site anyway and people heard about it from all over the area and were just pouring in so we don't really know how many were there but we suspect about 25,000 actually came that weekend. It's always great when you see a plan starting to work you know things drop into place. Unbelievably, uh, we had a wedding going on uh, at the same time that first weekend, um, which was simply that when we picked the date, uh, I hadn't done my due diligence. And suddenly, when I asked the house team here that we were going to obviously going to need to use the house and presumably it was available, to my horror, I heard that we had a wedding taking place and that they'd already paid their deposit, nothing I could do about it much. So that didn't sound very promising at all. So I got them in. And um, this charming Irish family came, we had a long tea, and I generally just ch tried to chat them up. And at the end I said, look, by the way, this is all a bit of a worry because um, we've got a big plan on for that weekend here at Goodwood. And um, perhaps you, you know, could think about moving your wedding to the weekend before or after. And um, we're going to hold this motorsport event, it's not going to be good for a wedding, you know, it's going to be very noisy and there's going to be a lot of people here and, you know, it could be the worst thing. And this guy said, all right, sounds absolutely bloody marvellous to me, he said. 
and um, and we couldn't really we couldn't we couldn't get them to move it. All, we, all we'd done was make them even more um, more keen to be here. So the fe the festival speed start line banner came down at three thirty on Saturday afternoon, and their bus drove under the banner into the house. And um, I guess a few people on site thought, "What on earth is going on here? This looks a bit weird." But no one really noticed. And the wedding took place in the house on Saturday, and they stayed overnight on Sunday, and actually even tried to fly. Robert Brooks's Gypsy Moth, which was part of the auction, out of the out of the park on, on Saturday night after one too many beers. But it was, um, I mean, to think now that we had a wedding going on at the same time and we just had to go with it was uh, fairly bizarre. I was very keen to take part in the festival. First, I thought it was important anyway that the kind of family was seen to be directly involved. Maybe why wouldn't I be? I mean, it's, it's much more fun to be involved. And also, actually, it was my go kart track as a as a, as a as a boy. So my absolute most thing I was most passionate about was my go kart, which I tore around those roads. I used to hide, wait for cars to arrive, and shoot out behind them. So of course, I wanted to take part, and I was very very lucky. I was offered to drive that wonderful A6 GCM Maserati um, of uh, the Gonzales Bira car, uh, and it was quite a challenge actually. I mean, I wasn't that ex I wasn't that experienced. It had a centre throttle, and I remember the gear stick was right between your legs as well. So it was quite difficult. Lovely, lovely. Lovely thing there. But what was wonderful was that there was a crowd. I mean, you know, Sunday, there was quite a big crowd. There was, we had 25,000 people over, over a day and a half. Amazing. Our most famous visitor probably that first year was George Harrison, who um, just paid his money and came. Um, he came in his lovely rocket, Gordon Murray car. I think he came with Gordon, actually. And um, I had no idea he was here. I saw this rocket parked outside the stables. It was just parked there randomly, and we were trying very hard to get, you know, that's what we didn't want to happen. And then discovered it was George, um, who was having a whale of a time, was super enthusiastic about it all. And we then organised so he'd get a run up the hill and actually took part in quite a few of the events um, thereafter and um, came to Goodwood a bit. And, you know, it was really, it was a real privilege to get to know him a little bit. I think a very important part of the festival from the beginning has been the quality of the, for me anyway, the quality of the cars and the motorcycles. Everything was open to everybody, the paddocks, everything. And we've kept that right to this day, as you know. And to me, it's one of the strongest things about uh, the Festival of Speed is the, is the proximity of the competitors and the machinery to the people who pay the money. We tried to get all the people with the most exciting cars, really, mostly from the UK, some from abroad, to come. I think only about less than 100 cars took part. And I can remember actually, you know, standing out there on that first Saturday afternoon as they all arrived, you know, directing them into the paddock and saying hello to them. And, you know, literally I was greeting each car as it arrived. Um, but wonderful to see them. I remember particularly, you know, I don't know why, but, you know, all the Astons arriving and seeing the DBR1 and DB3Ss and things, thinking, oh my God, you know, these cars one dreamt about. And suddenly here they were all rolling up and very excited and good humour and just looking forward to a fun time. And I think there hadn't up to then been so many, so many opportunities to drive these cars in a fun way with your, with, with, with your friends. And we were lucky we managed to bring a group of people together. My overriding memories of the entire project and the event itself is blisteringly hard work. But not only that, tremendous excitement. The adrenaline was amazing. I mean, you know, okay, you know, it wasn't heart surgery. We hadn't landed someone on the moon, but we had created a really nice motor racing event out of nothing. Of course, of course, it couldn't have happened without Lord March and it couldn't have happened without Goodwood House. And then immediately afterwards, there was Charles saying, well, phew, got away with that. Don't know if we'll run another one. Don't know if we'll run another one. And sure enough, you know, within weeks, he was saying, we're definitely running another one. And we took off from there. Extraordinary.